G'day guys, Paul, Twins Epic Adventures. Today, I'm gonna to do a quick video on recovery gear. So let's, uh, let's go. Righto, starting down here. Um, Max Tracks. We carry uh, four Max Tracks with us on our trip of Australia. Um, been pretty, pretty handy. We've used them a couple of times. Uh, been bogged once in the sand with the caravan on and we couldn't quite get out. Um, type, lowered the tire pressures, used the max tracks, and out we went. I'll put a put a bit of a link up on that next. Also, you will need a good quality shovel. Um, I carry a long handled shovel. Um, you can use these Max Tracks as shovels, but they're not quite as good as using a long-handled shovel. From there, we'll go across to, what are we talking about it? Tire deflator. So it's always handy to have a tire deflator. Drop those pressures down when you're going off the bitumen. Um, if you're going anywhere, gravelly, dirt, sand, mud, you are going to want to drop your pressure of your tyres. Otherwise, you probably are going to get stuck or come into some strife with tyre damage and the likes. Um, once you've dropped the pressure, obviously, when you hit back the bitumen, you're going to need to reinflate them. Um, so you're going to need some sort of air system. We run an ARB uh, single compressor, but I actually have two of them, so I've linked them together and I have an air tank and an external point in the back of the car to pump up the tyres on the car and also reach the van. Um, right, where do we go from here? All right, so talking tyres. A uh, good puncture repair kit, very, very handy to have. Um, we'll open that one up and I'll show you. Righto. So the punch kit I use is this ARB Speedy Seal. Um, pretty much any brand will do the, the same sort of job. Um, if you have a leak, pretty much grab this tool here. It's got a, got a bit of a thread on it. Push it in to make the hole all the way to the ground, make the hole the same size. Then you're going to get this tool, which has got a hole in the end and an inner and a cap that's the depth i'm going to grab one of these vulcanized ceiling pieces put that through half half through the through here and then push that into that hole you've made with that other tool um, obviously then there's a you'll just leave it long but there is a knife blade included in here to cut them off and um, they will just break off on the road as well anyway, as you're going. I always find just leaving them in there, leaving them long, they'll just cut themselves off to the right length. Um, yeah, also comes with spare spare valves, valve re removal tool and a couple of ends, plastic end, metal. And as well as a couple of um, tyre valves you can just pull into the tyre using that tool. Right, so that's that's a very handy handy thing to have. I recommend everyone have one of those. Um, it's got a got an instruction book too obviously so if you're not too sure how to use it or competent you can just read the instructions um, and that will get you out of trouble. Right, eh? Next thing you're gonna need is a good quality jack. Um, we have two jacks. I have a bottle jack and I run this ARB jack, um, which is, so it runs the same technology as what's in the BP51 shock absorbers from ARB. Um, super, super good, really handy. We've used it quite a few times. Lift the car off the ground, no rows at all. It's rated at two tonne, um, so it has no rows lifting up heavy vehicles such as my the front of my Lankers or the back or whatever. Um, from, but you will need to use, obviously get a plate so this just sits in here, like that, um, for obviously just to give you a larger, larger pushing point on the ground, larger surface area. And um, yeah, real good. I'll show you. I'll actually show you that lifting out the car a bit later. And uh, from there, good set of gloves. So gloves are handy when using any, I suppose, any of these straps or any of this sort of stuff that we're going to talk about next and obviously the winch um, put them on your hands keep your keep your hands clean and 
not all scratched up and destroyed. Uh, if you are using a winch and it has a wire wire cable, definitely recommend not grabbing onto the wire itself. Use the should be a, a bit of a strap on the front of the winch hook and just dragging it by the winch hook only. Don't sort of grab onto the the stainless fibers or the bar, the braid, or you will probably cut yourself. Um, right, eh? From there, snatch strap. Pretty self-explanatory. Put it on the back of your car or the front of your car. Put it on someone else and leave a little bit of a little bit of slack in between it, and let the kinetic force build up between the strap to recover you. Um, I also like to have one of these, which is just a snatch block. We use this. Um, we actually have recovery points on the back in the front of our vehicle. But I have this in case someone else is going to recover me because I no way do I want to be recovered from the back of someone's tow ball. Um, straps, snatch straps should not be attached just to tow balls. Just tow balls kill. Right, that's enough of that. Right, once you've got a winch, you're going to need a tree trunk protector. And wrap around it. You can also use that as a winch, oh, sorry, as a bridle. So it's a link to two points together under the car, two um, recovery points to even the load out. Um, so you don't have to buy a buy a strap or anything like that. You can just use that tree trunk protector. It's rated to 10 tonnes, so um, it's quite handy. Obviously just shackle it to either one of your recovery points, to the two recovery points at the front, and then winch off that, or whatever needs to happen with that. Um, and a winch extension strap super handy for obviously if your winch cable's not quite long enough to get you up the top of that hill or whatever uh, my winch cable is 25 meters and we run Dyneema um, but yeah that will give you another 10 meters and it's rated at five ton yeah five ton sorry four and a half ton yep so this is just an XTM kit of straps they all they all come together those three with the uh, winch a winch block and you get these two shackles in as a kit that's just from uh, I think I got that from BCF or Raise Outdoor probably BCF yep speaking of straps um, shackles so we run I have four different shackles uh, sorry two two of the same so these are 4.75 ton which are very good Make sure you're using the right size shackle for your vehicle and also the weight is rated to suit your application. Um, these are 3.2 tonne, sometimes you can't fit the 4.7s in where they need to go, so obviously this will be, these will do the job. Um, you can use these on those, when we're talking about that winch, using a the bridle on the front of the car between the two points, recovery points. Um, you could probably use those and then that one on the on the snatch strap or something like that. Yep, so that will be that. Uh, if you're using all this, you're definitely going to need to use a winch blanket. Now it's very, very important that you do put this on. Um, so the idea of this is to go between the winch and the wherever any there's any sort of buckle or or shackle um, sort of sits between this this here. And um, the idea is that it will dampen. If it, something does break, that will dampen and the shackle should fall to the ground. Um, now, the proper way to actually use these, which not many people know, is to fill these up with dirt. So they're actually got inside here. It's got two pockets, which most people would store all their recovery gear in or whatever. Um, just fill that full of dirt, make it really, really heavy, and then put it on. And yeah, that should be should get you out of trouble for recovery. Yeah, I was talking about before, these are my shackles, sorry, my recovery points on the front of my vehicle. I have two of them. So there's one on each side. These are rated at five ton each. Um, don't get under the, don't get confused with using the factory tie down point that most cars or vehicles will be fitted with. That is not a rated recovery point. Um, a lot of manufacturers will say, oh no, it'll be fine. Um, all it is really for is for pulling your vehicle up onto a tow truck and tying it down. It's not rated for any sort of force from a, from a snatch strap or um, you know, winching or anything off. You will break it and it will 
yeah, will cause a lot of drama. So just get yourself a good quality set of recovery points. Right, hey. Last thing on my list is you're gonna need in recovery gear is a good quality winch. Um, we've got a worn 9.5 XPS on the front of our Land Cruiser, um, nine and a half thousand pounds. It's been been really really good. But I had to use it to, to recover other people. I've never actually used it to recover myself. Um, but we have had pulled a Prado out that was buried well and truly below the diffs. Um, it had plenty of pulling power to do that properly. Um, yeah, so that would be last thing on my list. Um, we run Dyneema rope, as I talked about earlier. Um, I like Dyneema rope over cable, um, purely for, uh, I suppose, the, the ease of use and things like that. Um, one thing to note with Dyneema is it must be looked after properly and appropriately. After you go out for a big, um, through water crossings and things like that, you need to wash the rope. Um, and the same when you drive through big bog holes. Um, it's a good idea to, we just run it out, get a one of those $5 Bunnings buckets, fill it full of water, and just let the, the hose, like let the Dyneema rope just sort of sit in it. And then as we spool it back in, um, squeeze it with the gloves to, to, to get all the water out and stuff like that. Um, yeah, because otherwise the, the dirt particles can get stuck in between the fibers and damage the Dyneema. One, another good, Good bit of advice before you go out on your on your trip actually run your winch out make sure you you're um, are running that winch every now and again probably once a month i'd recommend pulling it out just letting it spool back in just to keep everything lubricated so in some of the winches all the grease and um oils and whatever they can all dry out um and, you know reason for having a winch is if you need it you're going to need it so you want to make sure it's working and working well um, and not all dried up and seized so yeah just give the clutch a bit of a bit of a flick make sure it free spools out engages put it up against a tree put your handbrake on and your foot on the brake um, and slowly slowly like let the winch actually pull the vehicle against that tree while you apply some braking force just to so you can actually see it is working and pulling and it will get you out of that big bog hole that you're stuck in shall the shall the, the need come thanks guys if you're liking what you're seeing please like the channel subscribe comment share um yeah and i'll continue to try and keep up with weekly videos for you guys anyways guys see you out there bye